Okay guys, in this next project, we're gonna do some work with typography. And uh, I got this idea actually, I was just kind of uh, going through the internet a few years ago and uh, came across this actual, this Darth Vader one where it says, you know, you don't know the power of the dark side. And uh, you know, with my inherent nerdiness to do with Star Wars and computers and such, I thought this is a pretty cool idea. And uh, you can laugh all you want, but I ended up uh, printing it off, framing it, and it looks pretty wicked. Anyway, I, I thought it actually makes for a pretty cool uh, assignment. So uh, I started looking for some stuff as well and you know, found some other examples and this one being of course Han Solo and uh, we got Yoda here and I thought it was neat that they're using basically just nothing but letters to to actually make a, a known phrase or in this case a known character and then I started seeing it more and more on the internet so you know here's uh, here's one of Bob Marley and, and what's so cool is when you actually look at all these words you know it's all terms that relate to him now whether that be lyrics of his songs or, or things that he was interested in or whatnot right it's kind of a very cool concept um, this of course being Justin Timberlake, uh, Justin Bieber, um, and then so anyway, I introduced this as an assignment a few years ago in uh, in Graphics 12, and uh, it's become one of the more popular ones. People seem to really enjoy it. So here's uh, all these examples are in the common drive. You're welcome to look through them. Um, you know, we got the Olympic one before that. We've got the baseball one. Um, I think this is a Pokemon thing. If it's not, you guys are probably laughing at me right now. I'm fine with it. Um, Anyway, it, what's so cool is is just the way that you can manipulate this text and especially when you start adding in some cool elements like different shading or in this case even the dashed line that goes around it. It has a very cool look. So, and the other cool thing is there's so much you can do with it. You know, at an extreme you could even bring this into a vector-based program and you could, uh, you could actually do an entire vinyl of this for your wall or you can bring it into a website or, or whatnot. Uh, this one didn't quite get finished but kind of a cool one with the horse there. Um, so anyway, I want to kind of go over the basics of how you're going to do this. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what are you going to do. Now I'll be honest, most people in this assignment, uh, they tend to do a character. Cartoon characters work really well, but you don't have to by any means. Um, you can do landscapes, you can do famous structures, you can do just a, you know a cityscape. I, I had someone do uh, the cityscape of Vancouver one time, it, looked, it actually looked pretty epic. Um, anyway, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of get some ideas and I was thinking okay maybe I'll do a link here and that one looks pretty good so I'll just drag that onto my desktop and then when it comes to getting the words a lot of people you know might have some trouble with that really easy solution is actually just go to Wikipedia or really any site that, that has a lot of information about your subject and you can just start using words from here you know so using names using names of the game using uh, you know certain words like master sword magical sword things like that that show up a lot so you can actually uh, you know have have words that relate to your uh, to your visual which is the whole point of this um, but you can also like I said you can do landscapes or realistic things like uh, the Statue of Liberty the Eiffel Tower things like that it's really up to you okay so anyway in terms of uh, of how we go about doing this um, I'm just bringing in this image right here. Now, the first thing you, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about is the importance of having a very high resolution image. Okay, although I, I should correct myself, the the image itself we're never going to see again. We're only using it as a guideline. So even in this case, when I have an image that is, what is it, 976 by 956, it's not that big. I might actually decide to enlarge the canvas size or or the image size doesn't really matter and I might say you know what I want this to be big because I'm making a, I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this and I want to have a high high resolution version at the end so you know I may make this 2500 so what that essentially does is make it blurry okay because I'm, I'm expanding the pixels but again it doesn't matter so uh, once I've got my image in here I'm just gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna fill it with white, there we go. And then I'm just gonna lower the opacity of my actual subject here. Because again, it's really just a guideline. Eventually I'm gonna delete it and I don't want it really interfering with my text. So uh, let's start with something really simple. We're gonna use the text uh, link. So I'm gonna type the word link. And you know, it depends, you can choose whatever font you want for this. 
I will warn you though, you're gonna wanna use something that is has a bit of boldness to it. So don't use a really thin, clean font. Um, use something that has a little bit of weight. So an impact, uh, maybe an aerial bold, something like that. It just turns out a lot better when you start putting the colors in. So I'm gonna take this link text here and get it the approximate size that I want and I don't know, something like that. And I'll just maybe, I don't know, start on his, uh, maybe I'll do the end of the sword here. Something like that. Now, you wanna actually convert this a little bit so you can start manipulating it. And you can't really convert, or you can't manipulate uh, raw text that's editable. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to uh, the type here and go to convert to shape. This is better than rasterizing it. Rasterizing it turns it into pure pixels. When you actually convert to a shape, what it's gonna do is actually uh, maintain kind of the vectorness of it so you can actually uh, enlarge or, uh, or shrink it if you ever want to. Anyway, now that I've done that, um, I can just, I can double click it at any time and I can change the color really easily. Another reason why this is way better than converting it, or sorry, than to rasterize it. Um, but what I can do is I can go to edit and I can go to my transform path menu. And from here, I have a few options. So you guys are probably familiar, you know, you could skew it, you could distort it. Uh, I could distort it down like that or, you know, grab different parts and, and that's, that might work for you, okay? Depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. But I think the best one that you'll have the most luck with is probably gonna be um, edit, transform path, and use the warp. Now with the warp, this is gonna look a lot like when we were doing vector imaging with these handles. So you can actually drag these handles around, you can drag the, uh, the nodes, and you can get it to the exact shape that you want. Now, it does tend to round it a little bit, and maybe maybe you want that, maybe you don't, but you can just kind of mess around until you get exactly what you want. So I'm gonna kind of sharpen that edge a little bit. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. There we go. Hit the check mark, and now I've kind of got something that might represent the end of that sword. Now if I uh, you know, continue with this and I do multiple texts in here, maybe a few different words to make up the blade of the sword, when I put all that together and I add some shading, it's gonna look really sharp. Um, now so the warp feature actually converts the entire bunch of it, but if you wanna convert just one letter a little bit, you can actually go over here to the direct selection tool. And when you do that, let's zoom in a little bit more for you, um, you can actually grab onto the individual nodes that make up that each letter. So again, you get basically unlimited control by doing this, and a lot of you are gonna find that this is very uh, very vectorish, okay? It's gonna remind you a lot of when we were doing that unit. Um, technically, you can do this entire project in a vector-based program, uh, like CorelDRAW or Illustrator, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I've always done it in Photoshop, and I just, I tend to get better results. So, um, it takes a little bit of conceptualizing, but that's kind of what we're here for. You guys are gonna think about it, come up with a really cool concept, start getting your words and start laying this out. And uh, yeah, use the internet for uh, some inspiration. There's lots of great examples out there and we'll be working on this for a couple classes. Thanks guys.